everybody in. It's another nice job live chat. How are you doing out there? I hope you are doing well. Joining us here on a Thursday, got another great expert guest lined up. Um, but as always, if you're new to the stream here, if you're new to the Nice Job Podcast, uh, all we ask, we'd love for you to comment, love for you to share, love for you to like, subscribe, all that great stuff. But all we really ask of you is just give us a good listen and take something from this episode and just try it. Try it in your world, try it in your life, because if you try it and it works, great, come on back, we got more tips. If it doesn't work, you've at least tried something, you got some more data to then go make a better decision. So if you're listening, that's all we kind of ask. But if you do want to share it with colleagues, friends, other people within your network, we'd love to have some more ears on it as well. In this episode of the Nice Job Podcast, uh, my guest, uh, we've had a couple of conversations. I actually saw him speak about the topic that we're going to discuss in this episode uh, at, a, at a summit. Um, and, and at that moment, I went up as soon as I got a chance to go to him. I said, hey, at some point, we're getting a podcast started. I want to get you on the podcast. A lot has happened between now and then. Uh, but I think it only goes further to enhance our topic uh, is Caleb Winninger. Uh, from Lake State Cleaning. Caleb, uh, how are you? Thank you so much for joining us here on the podcast. I am doing great, Sean. Thank you for having me. And I do remember that evening. I remember you approaching me and uh, I'm really glad that we finally got to connect on this because I've been looking forward to it for a long time. Yeah, I, we, uh, it was when I heard the presentation, I kind of heard what you were saying. It, it spoke on a couple of different levels. I mean, you know, from a personal perspective, um, I, I just... It was such a, you know, that event, uh, you know, was kind of a, not exclusive as in, you know, but it was, you know, it was for a certain group. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted that point just to give you a megaphone. So this is my small <laughs> chance to kind of, to give you that megaphone to share it. Um, but also, you know, at that point, which I don't know if you know, like I was still relatively new to Night Shop at that point. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of the first events that I kind of did, did, and I was trying to figure out what type of impact will I want to put uh, on this company? Um, mm -hmm. And the type of impact I, I want to do is to kind of find, you know, small business owners, entrepreneurs at all different levels and provide them with something. And, and the topic we're going to talk about today is, is perspective. Um, yes. And I think no matter where you are in the entrepreneurial ecosystem, perspective is going to play a role. Before we go into that, Caleb, a little bit about yourself. Uh, when did the entrepreneurial bug bite you or, or was it something that kind of, oh, it's like, when did you kind of start to make the transition from, you know, being a kid, being a guy and then going in yeah. and, and trying to make it your own way? Uh, I usually describe myself as one of those accidental entrepreneurs. I, um, you know, I own an exterior cleaning business in the Metro Detroit area and I've been at it for a long time, 20 years. Um, so I was just a young guy, 20, 21 years old when I started, but I didn't have a plan. I didn't know anything about business. Um, I didn't have an end game at all. I just, I needed a job and I moved to a new area and I, and I knew how to clean stuff. And I thought, oh, what do I got to lose? I'm going to start a business and somehow survive for a couple of years, despite my best efforts and, you know, kind of grew it from there. But, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm here now almost by accident. Um, and, uh, learned a lot of stuff the hard way along the way and it kind of speaks to the topic perspective that we're going to get into a little bit more later. But um, yeah, you know, again, uh, accidental and maybe even sort of a late bloomer because it wasn't until, you know, I was well into my business 10 plus years before I really started to kind of connect the dots. Like, well, there's a method to this. If I actually want to get anywhere, I need, it's not just about the job I'm out there doing, but I have to I have to like build a machine. I have to build an infrastructure to actually grow this thing. And uh, it took me a long time to figure that out, unfortunately. But, you know, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I kind of took the long, hard way because um, I learned a lot of valuable lessons along the way. So it's been, it's been good. And I'm, I'm really happy with where I'm at. So when you got into business, um, did you know almost the, the the type of business that you wanted to get into? Because I always find it interesting and some people are like, you know what, I, I found the passion for the skill and I turned it mm -hmm. into the business. And other people were like, or I wanted to get in the business and this was something that either had the most opportunities or something that, that kind of married another passion of mine or something, whether it's helping people yeah. or something like that. What was that journey like for you? It was very much the former. You know, I, I started a window cleaning company and I had been working for a friend's father who owned a small window cleaning company and I got pretty good at the, the trade. And it was really like my only marketable skill. <laughs> it was the only thing I was putting out to the world that had any value really, I felt like at that time. So um, that, that was what 
that was the only reason I started that business. I, I didn't, um, in retrospect, I wish I would have known enough to explore the market and explore the opportunity and, you know, make sure that this was something that I um, was all in on and that would be a viable business. Um, but, you know, hindsight, that, that's just how it goes. And uh, so, yeah, and that goes back to what I was saying, accidental, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't plan to, to get into this industry and grow it to the point that I have. It was just where I ended up and it was what I had to work with and I just rolled with it. Um, so yeah, kind of did it backwards. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you were very, uh, you know, kind of an analytical person. You're, you're always, you know, you're taking stock, you're, you're kind of looking. Um, and, and I know that, that you kind of like to plan. So it's funny. You, yeah. Accidentally got your way into it, but mm -hmm. I have a feeling you have a, a purposeful way uh, to get out of it. Um, or am I wrong in that assumption? Uh, you know, where, where do you, are you starting to really start to set foundation or at least a general structure of where you want to go? Uh, or are you always keeping in the back of your mind of like, you know what, I'll always be open to opportunity. Yeah. Um, well, I think as an entrepreneur, you know, if you're growing and there's a connection between who you are as a person and who you are as an entrepreneur. They're kind of inextricably connected. And if you're growing as a person, you get older, more mature, your, your priorities change, more responsibility. Um, you just get some more mileage under your belt. And, and um, I think generally you start to develop a, a different set of skills and a different way of making decisions and things like that as you mature. And I think that's what happened with me early on. It was just hustle, you know, work really hard and, do great work and make your customers happy. And that's all you got to do. And it's going to be fine. Um, but then, you know, as time moved on, my priorities and my perspective changed. And then the way that I approached decision-making and the way that I saw the world and my business. And when I started to hire employees, the way I saw my accountability to them, I really changed and grew as my business grew. And so I did kind of develop more of an approach where I was analyzing decisions and, you know, very data driven. And um, I think for me that that was directly tied to the level of risk that I was willing to to tolerate and what I had on the line, you know, because as a young, young guy, single with really no responsibilities, I didn't have a lot to lose. And then as I got older and uh, grew a family and started to bring staff on, um, you know, the, the level of responsibility rises as you go throughout your entrepreneurial journey. And that was kind of what really got to me was that that began that started to become like a weight, you know, and I wanted to make sure that every decision I made was the right one so that I didn't put any of those things at risk. And um, in my case, you know, I saw that ne needle kind of swing too far the other way a lot of times, which, you know, kind of takes us back to that perspective topic. Yeah, I mean, we we I, we certainly can go dive right into that because um, you mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, like oh, in, in hindsight, you know, look back and and sometimes I think when people think high level about perspective, um, they they don't have an approach of necessarily. I think they always think of it as like a, a shifting. You know, I think mm -hmm. when they think perspective, the first thing is like, oh, this he's going to tell me like just think a little bit differently, but that's not exactly kind of the the story you you tell. Um, and and so. Kind of to dive into the perspective sort of, uh, you know, discussion. Yeah. If the high level definition for some people is that, well, what is your high level definition of perspective? Well, to me, it's more like having a set of tools that, that allows me to change my perspective, you know, when I need to. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't, I don't want to change who I am per se. You know, my, I have a certain worldview and that's just part of who I am. And everybody has that. You don't need to like fundamentally change all of that. All you really need to do is be able to step outside of that for a while periodically and look at things from a different direction. So one thing that I struggled with as I was growing as an entrepreneur and as a business owner was, you know, that, that fear of risk. I didn't want to make a mistake that was going to put something really important at risk. Um, like, like my family or, or my staff or just my business in general. And so that made me very risk averse. And I would, I, I found myself overanalyzing decisions and not taking risks and being a little more cautious than I probably needed to be. And looking back, that was because I didn't have a, a way to get out of my own worldview for a second. Um, 
and, and it really slowed me down. It really held me back now that I, now that I look back on it. And, uh, um, over time, you know, I started to get some business coaching and that re- that sort of opened my eyes to, oh, this is what it's like to have an input in your life or, or a, um, a set of tools that can take you out of your groove that you're just naturally in all the time and, and give you a different spin on what's, what's happening. You know, same events, same time in, in the timeline, same scenario, but a different take on it looking at it from a different angle. And when I started to kind of get some of that influence, um, it really opened my eyes, you know, and it, it was freeing in a lot of ways. Um, it helped me to let go of some of that risk aversion that was kind of slowing slowing me down as an entrepreneur and even slowing the growth of my business down. And risk aversion tends to sometimes go hand in hand with a little like a analysis paralysis because mm-hmm. you're always looking for the safest option and, and it sounds like it's going to be the same thing, but instead of like maybe the less risky, because perhaps you you have to know there's a level of risk in certain sort of things. If you're always looking for no risk. You're going to be left with limited options and probably more missed opportunities. Um, was yeah. that, you know, something that kind of came along a, as you started to, okay, I got to be less risk averse, but how do I not go wild, man? Like, how, how did you make sure to keep yourself metered? Because sometimes when they have an enlightenment and, and mm-hmm. you've, you've seen it, I know, you know, with the Conquer program, as soon as you get someone in there and after the first couple of calls, they're like, oh, my, and you're like, okay, well, like we're still making smart decisions here. Right. How, how did you make sure that when, you know, the road got open to not just pedal the metal on the gas there? Well, I think, you know, for me inherently, I have, I always have that, um, sort of analytical side to me. So, and I trust that, you know, so I, I know what recklessness looks like. And, and so it, it's been relatively easy for me to avoid going that far. For me, it was really more getting some momentum toward taking some risks, making some big moves. And uh, I, I, that's kind of a two part process for me. And one of the things that I talked about in that presentation was um, just, I, I sort of created this mental tool for myself where I would take a second when, when I felt like I was being maybe a, a little more risk averse than was necessary, or, or maybe I just didn't quite have the perspective on a certain challenging situation or a risky um, decision or big move. I would take myself out of that moment and start to ask myself a series of questions. And it was really, it came down to, if I do this, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen? And I would ask that about uh, my family and my staff and my business and myself personally. And I would sit there and I would think about it until I had the answers to those questions. If I make this decision, if I take this action, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen if it goes wrong? And going through that process, I almost always came to the realization that it was not going to be as bad as my, my gut, my natural state was telling me. Um, and I would work through a, you know, a series of secondary questions maybe, and just sort of arrive at like, you know, if this goes absolutely terribly wrong, this is where I'm going to be at when it's all said and done. And it was never as bad as I had initially thought. And so when I got comfortable working through that process, then it became a lot easier for me to uh, take a scenario and run it through that, that process and come out the other side and say, okay, I can live with that. And the reward is worth that risk. So for me to get to that point where I could make that decision, I had to kind of develop a, a thought process that took me out of just my natural state of processing information, which is just sort of risk averse. Yeah. So you talk about processing information, but would you say that you saw yourself as someone that always thought worst case scenario? Like, like, like when you started really breaking it down, like, all right, what's the worst that can happen? How often were you light years away from what you thought? And how often were you like, you know what? Not as bad, but I was smart to at least take a second there. I think it was a good mix of both, a good balance. You know, I think in a lot of cases, um, analyzing the decisions that I was going to make served me well you know, and it kept me from doing a lot of reckless, silly things and being strategic about a lot of the decisions I made. But then there were other times where it was like, all right, man, you need to get over it and just step up and make this move. Um, and so that, that was kind of what I did on the internal side of it. But then, you know, the other side of the coin to me was the external influences that I, that I tried to bring into my entrepreneurial 
environment. And that was another huge component to it. Yeah, because the that's, you know, to use the same word, it's kind of different per perspectives there, kind of even on the same thing, you know, uh, perhaps it's something you haven't thought about, or perhaps it's something where, you know what, it's, it is how you evaluated it. But did you think about how, you know, you could recover? So if worst case happens, and this is all something that does happen, maybe the the detrimental quality isn't as bad as you think. Like the bad mm -hmm. stuff's still happening, but, you know, you can rehire, you can do this, like you can kind of go around it. Yeah. Um, is there a strategy that you've employed to kind of make sure that you always have enough sort of, uh, you know, the feedback or, you know, obviously, you know, you know you're coaching and mentoring, like, is there a, a I don't want to say a plan or whatever, but do you kind of look at like, hey, I want to make sure I'm always having, you know, three people in this decision, or I want to make sure at the very least, I'm not going to get caught in the loop of, all right, well, let me ask one more person. Let me ask one more person. Right. One more person. Do you have a strategy yeah. for people that think they may struggle with that sort of mentality when it comes into getting feedback from others? Absolutely. Yeah. So here's what worked for me. And, and I live in this to this very day. Um, I wanted to have a strong influence in my life in, in about three different spaces, right? So I want somebody inside my business that I trust, and, but that's different enough from me that I'm not just going to get, it's not going to be a feedback loop, right? So somebody who's smart, who, who is aggressive and who can kind of um, complement the qualities that I have, fill in some of my gaps. So I always want somebody in my company right close to me on a daily basis that's going to be helping me step outside of myself. So that was space number one. Space number two for me is um, my professional environment outside of my business. And so that would be, you know, coaches, uh, mentors. Some of the best advice I got, I attended the um, Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program uh, summer before last. One of the big things that they pushed in that program was uh, creating for yourself a... Um, an executive advisory board. So, and that, that's basically just a, a little group of people that you, again, that you trust and respect that you can go to for some input. So when you're getting ready to make a big decision, hey, should I open this new location in this new market? Or should I hire this, this big expensive management position? You've got uh, people on your advisory board that, that are entrepreneurs themselves that have probably been in a similar situation and that just can provide a, another set of eyes on the decision that you're about to make. And then, uh, you know, so that, that kind of covers the professional environment outside of my business. And then I always want somebody close to me on a personal level that, that can serve as sort of a mentor or a sounding board. Somebody that knows me really well, knows my, you know, my flaws and my strengths and uh, can, and is comfortable pushing me a little bit and pushing back on, on the things that I say. So I've found that if I have influences uh, in all three of those spots kind of working on me at the same time, that's really powerful uh, because you, you get this sort of like 360 degree view of the situation um, from some very valuable perspectives and it's not to say that you're abdicating the decision or the action to any of these people. But for me, it's, uh, it, it helps me feel like I have a well-rounded perspective on whatever the, the issue is. And I feel a lot more confident when it's time to make a move. And uh, one and audience in particular that, that I wanted to, to make sure to kind of to speak to, because as I mentioned at the top of the show, you and I, we, we met and we, we talked and I asked about coming on the show. That was January of 2020, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 12 months, everything yeah. had been there. You want to talk about well, like crazy need, months. <laughs> yeah, like, but needing to keep perspective and like needing to understand it and, and saying like, well, what's the worst that can happen and finding out that perhaps there's a worst that we couldn't think of. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I have a, I had the feeling throughout that this, the worst might be happening in 2020 to some individuals. Mm -hmm. but there still was a path of survival, whether it was right. just the entrepreneurial spirit, like the type of the context that makes up these people, whether it was systems and accountability that they're putting in place to make sure that there's really, you know, there's no end all be all failure wasn't going to be done. I'm interested as someone that is very passionate about perspective. 
how that played into your 2020, but I'm sure you had a ton of people asking you, you know, how to sort of look, has there, I don't say there's anything kind of changed, obviously everything is changing, but how has that either, you know, solidified some foundations when it comes to having proper perspective? And was there anything that it taught you? And you're like, you know what, you know, thank goodness I was already kind of thinking about this because when that came about, there was no, no nothing rocked my world there. Right. Yeah. Um, I think going through this last year, having worked really hard, you know, personally on developing a better way to gain perspective and get, get out of the zoomed in view of, you know, this is this sort of a deer in the headlights situation when challenges come your way and being able to zoom out and, and look at things from a higher perspective and have that input that having all that in place going into this year has been invaluable. You know, I, I'm sure I would have had a much harder time if I hadn't already had that foundation in place. Um, and, and so for me, that that's an exercise that I've gone through many times over this last year, you know, let's take a second. Okay. This is a new challenge that we have to overcome. I need to figure out how to, uh, manage the, the safety and comfort level of my staff, all of whom have, uh, different degrees of concern for their safety, you know, that they're out there working in the public. And I have to try to juggle all of that. And I'm, I need to avoid a, mut a mutiny. I also need to avoid people being exposed to unnecessary risk. And I also need to show them respect. And I also need to protect my customers. I mean, that all that is, it could be overwhelming. Um, but having those tools in place to help me sort of process all that information and realize that, you know, I might not make the best decision. I might not make a perfect decision, but I can take action and regardless of how it goes, I'm, I'm going to be able to, to kind of continue on and make the best of whatever situation comes from it. Um, that, that's just the peace of mind that that's given me over the last year has, has been massive. And, and the clarity that you get when you're able to do that, when you're able to have a, a higher level perspective, it allows, it, it's sort of like a self, um, um, it's like a perpetual motion machine, I guess is a good analogy because by having that, that um, perspective, it gives you clarity, which, which then gives you the ability to make better decisions and you're going to be more successful more often. And that loop just continues to happen over and over and over again. And I've seen that play out this over this last year. Another thing I saw kind of start to creep, I don't say back into the ecosystem, but I, I did see it a bunch in 2020 was, uh, comparative perspective. And I'd love to get your thoughts on those, maybe looking at competitors or looking at another family member as a similar sort of business and just constantly using that as a measuring stick, which, you know, influence, it could be good, but sometimes that can cause a, you know, a, a weird lens to go over your view uh, and, you know, cloud your perspective, just to kind of put it bluntly. Um, you know, what did, I don't say your thoughts on like kind of comparative perspective, but I saw that creep in more in 2020 and I would love for you to kind of touch on how to almost kind of avoid that pitfall, but why that is that thinking that's along that same time of risk averse of that's one of those things that's going to get you in an endless cycle that it's going to be really hard to get out of. Yeah, that's a double-edged sword. I mean, it, it can be a, a motivator, it can be a driver, mm -hmm. but it can also, you know, it can backfire on you badly. And um, I've always felt that putting too much focus on what other people are doing just takes your eye off the ball, off your ball, you know? And, and um, I think one thing that, that's critical there is you have, to, you have to know what you want as an entrepreneur, as an owner, what your why is. You have to be very crystal clear on that. And then that allows you to ask a simple question. If I, if I make this decision or take this action, does it take me closer to my why? Or does it take me farther away? And if if that's the the filter that you're running all your activity through, then it almost doesn't matter so much what anybody else is doing. And um, I see entrepreneurs sometimes, like you mentioned, they they get wrapped up in in competitors wanting to be like someone else, or 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 comparing their success level or their growth level to to a competitor or someone in a different part of the country or a different industry or whatever. And 
you know, that can be, that can be very counterproductive because it, um, what it, what it indicates is that you're not focused on your why you're focused on someone else's why. And, uh, it's very hard to, to make much progress when, when you're not really laser focused on what your end goal is. And oftentimes you start missing out on your own successes. You know, you're so worried about comparing what you're doing, but you don't think about the fact of, you know, h- hiring, uh, you know, your, your first territory manager or something like that. And well, the other guy's got three, like, well, you have one, like you got to that level. There's so many milestones along the way that, you know, making sure that you're kind of celebrating, recognizing them. But it, for me, and that's why that you're, when, when you spoke and you kind of talk about perspective, that was the one thing that clicked for me was, you know what? I, I have goals and I have places I want to get to, but making sure I'm recognizing along the way, the lessons I've kind of learned throughout, but then, you know, also knowing that if I, everyone who listens to the podcast knows I love my sports references, but if you're winning all your games, then your playoff fate, your championship fate will be in your hands. You don't right. put it in someone else's. So just because right. someone's got a lead on another scoreboard, that's not the game you're playing right now. You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You, how, what is the point of working on someone else's why? Yeah. Right. So um, I, I think a lot of times what happens with entrepreneurs is they start backwards. You know, they say, um, I'm going to start this business and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to grow it and grow it and grow it and grow it. And um, they, they don't really know what it's for. It has no purpose. Now, some people just love the game and that's just, that's why they do it. And that's fine. If that's your why you just love to build and grow, then that's awesome. But if, if you have a, a particular end goal, that really needs to be where we start. Because then your perspective on everything that happens leading up to that is it has a direction. Um, so, so to me, I always encourage entrepreneurs that are just getting started. What do you want your life to look like when, when this business has sort of peaked? Or uh, let me put it a different way. What do you want your life to look like? And then what does, what business do you need to create that facilitates that, that makes that possible? Then just make that business. Don't make anything else because it's not going to serve you. So you really have to, that term begin with the end in mind. There's no other area in life where that's bigger than in entrepreneurship. And, and the end is not what your balance sheet says or what your P&L says, it's what life are you living from day to day? It's, it's spot, spot on. And, uh, you know, I, I really uh, appreciate you kind of taking the time to, to come on the show and, and speak. Um, if someone wants to either, you know, learn more about you or try to connect with you or, or just to kind of not so much pick your brain, but maybe figure out kind of what resources you're using as well. Uh, where's the best yeah. place to direct the, those people? Well, um, a couple of things I'm really into right now. Um, obviously my, my, Cleaning business is a um, big part of my life, but um, I'm uh, actively involved in the AGS Conquer program. Uh, wrapping up my coach certification here this next week, and I've been working in Basecamp over there, which is a really awesome repository for um, templates and operating procedures and documents and worksheets and all kinds of things for business growth. So I've been kind of curating that collection for the last six months, and that's been really fun. Um, huge, nice job fan that I, I tell everybody nice job is the heart highest ROI piece of software that we have in our business, in my cleaning business by, by a mile. And, uh, so, um, I'm really, I love being on this show just cause I'm such a huge fan. Um, but yeah, anybody who wants to reach out to me, uh, uh, feel free to give me a, an email at Caleb at automate or You can reach me on Facebook. I'm pretty active there. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I love to chat business. It's one of my favorite things. Nice. Well, we'll have uh, we'll have some of that kind of info uh, in our episode description. Uh, if you're listening to the audio only version, you'll see it in the show notes, and YouTube, you'll see it uh, down below. Uh, I think for for clarity's sake, I want to bring up Kayla before we started. You know, broadcasting recording. I said I was like, this is not a need to plug nice job thing. So we are very thankful. Uh, you know, for no. For your, listen, you, uh, I, I felt compelled. I could not leave this this show without uh, praising my favorite uh, piece of business building software. So. Well, I, I, as a nice job representative, uh, I, I thank you for that. Uh, but just as the host of the show, as someone that's, you know, uh, seen you, you know, talk, seen some of the things you've done to, with the con group, things like that. Uh, really thankful for the time and, and glad that, you know, we've been able to have some conversations. And finally, this one where I was able to kind of amplify uh, some of the great things that I believe that you were saying. So uh, thank you yeah, once again for joining time. us and have a great rest of your day. Yeah, I hope to do it again. Thanks a lot, Sean.
And for all of you out there listening, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back next Thursday, another episode. We are deep into season two here. We're going to keep coming at you. Uh, And as always, you know, find something from this episode. If you have it down on the notepad, circle it and just implement it. Uh, And today, I think you look at perspective and and just take a different look at things. Make sure you have enough influences uh, and, and opinions out there and some feedback. But in the end, you know, you know you, you know where you want to be. And if you don't, let's figure that out and go for, uh, from there. Uh, as always, from all of us in the shop team, we are so thankful you're there. I want to remind you to make sure that you're being safe, being healthy, and don't forget to have a little fun out there as well. Take care, everybody.